All right, guys, you've been waiting. Part two, lithium DIY build, coming up next. All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Thomas, and my wife's name is Melissa. This is Home on the Hitch. If you are new here, we are glad to have you here. If you're returning, uh, thanks for coming back for another video. Uh, do us a favor and think about hitting that subscribe button down there and that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We really appreciate it. All right, let's get started today. It's going to be on part two of our lithium iron phosphate uh, DIY battery build uh, for your RV, a little bit on the cheap. Uh, we're going to talk about cell balancing, uh, what it is and, and how I do it, um, if you need to do it. And so let's get into that and we'll, we'll talk about some different ways to put everything together. All right, guys. So when we left off last time, we had talked about some of the parts that we were going to need. Uh, we talked about our CALB cells, which are aviation grade cells that are enca encased in nylon. Uh, these are 3.2 nominal volts each at 100 amp hours. Uh, we talked about our BMS. Um, this is still the uh, 60 amp BMS. This is not the one that I'm going to end up using on the actual completed battery, but I'm going to go ahead and put it together today so I can show you how that's done. All right, so the first thing that we should really talk about is cell balancing. And basically, it's extremely simple. Uh, a lot of people have a different opinion on it, but it is nothing more than trying to get each cell at the same state of charge when you put the battery pack together. So when these cells are charged up and discharged, uh, they should remain even. Uh, thus, they're not causing any wear and tear on any of the other cells. That's true as long as your cells are matched uh, with similar resistance. Um, if you have a bad cell to start with, then it's not going to charge and discharge the same as your other cells. But you put, you know, four new cells together and you should be all right. You can look up top balancing. You can look up bottom balancing uh, and they're exactly what they sound like. Either balance the, you charge everything up and balance the cells at that point uh, at the top, their top state of charge, or you discharge them all the way to their, their depth of discharge and balance them there. People claim benefits to either one. I balance them uh, at a nominal voltage at like 3.2, 3.3, uh, because it's always worked for me. I've never had a problem. If you're using a good BMS, it's gonna be watching the individual cells anyway. Never really had an issue. All right, so about how do you balance them? Uh, well, if you're doing a lot of batteries, a lot of battery testing, a lot of battery balancing, you can buy equipment um, specifically made that you can hook up like four cells to it. It'll charge them up, discharge them, uh, balance the cell. It, it, it does everything for you. Uh, if you're doing a lot of cells, re repeat batteries, then that might be a good way to go. Uh, what I do is basically it's just a passive balance. So disclaimer, this is electricity and these lithium batteries will discharge electricity at a rapid a violent rate so do any of this at your own risk my recommendation to you if you've never messed with any of this stuff a educate yourself b get some composite non-electrical conducting tools uh, ratchet sets and stuff like that to work with so in case you drop it across the terminals of this a, you don't start a fire, and B, you don't destroy one of your, your cells. Okay, that's, that's the reason I have these taped over, uh, because I've had them resting and balancing, and I didn't want anyone to come along and bump into them or cause any problems. So you have, you know, you can put your batteries, cells, or batteries, either in series or parallel. When you put the batteries in parallel, which is exactly what they're in right here, these battery cells are placed in a parallel configuration. And that's, it's pretty easy to remember because all the poles run parallel. All the positives, all the negatives. So what that does is 
the voltage remains the same, but the amp hour is added up between the battery cells. So you could say this is a 3.2 volt, 400 amp hour battery pack. So this is how I balance my, my battery cells. I have these aluminum bus bars that I made uh, and simply I put the batteries together and hook them all up just exactly like you see by way of just basic potential energy force. If this is a lower voltage than this, it will equalize over time. I usually put them like this and let them sit for 24 hours. These um, batteries have been sitting here for about three days actually like this so that is more than ample time uh, 12 to 24 hours is probably all you need unless something is severely wrong now those are all the all four of these cells are balanced um, with each other to a point that i think is going to be sufficient next thing we need to talk about is how we're going to get these things together um, to make a battery pack out of it there's thousands of ways, I guess you could say, probably to put these things together. This is just the way I like to do it. Um, like I said earlier, with these calb cells, you really don't even have to put these um, in any type of encasement. As long as they were held together securely, that's all that matters. Because they, like I said in the first video, they have a really tough case. And you can buy shrink wrap. Uh, big heat shrink tubing that off of eBay and it slides right over uh, hit it with a heat gun and it kind of compacts it in and that's a good way to do it another thing that you're going to do or you're going to need are some good bus bars to connect the terminals now you can buy those bus bars you can use aluminum you can use copper uh, the what I usually do is instead of of actually just ordering bus bars you know that are, are made for it uh this is a three uh, excuse me this is a, a half inch or was half inch copper pipe and i have a small template for the bus bars and basically i take the piece of copper pipe heat it up pretty warm and hammer it flat on an anvil or, or some type of hard service uh, and it gets to almost be solidly welded together there. So this is a very thick piece of copper uh, that I use for my bus bars. So it's just a, another way to save money and do it yourself. You can buy a stick of, of copper pipe for 6 or $7 and make a lot of uh, very good bus bars. The correct configuration. Now we were talking about having the cells in parallel, which was all the poles being together. Well, when we wire these up, we're actually, to make it to our 12 volt battery, we're actually gonna wire them in series. And that is gonna look like this. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative. In parallel, the voltage stays the same and the amp hours are added up. In series, it's the opposite. <clears throat> the amp hours stay the same and the voltage is added up. So that's why we have, you know, a 3.2 and 3.2 uh, and 3.2 and 3.2. That gives us our 12 volt battery. So that's what we're going to do. I have got these cells already labeled. Uh, right here <clears throat> this is going to end up being our main positive terminal uh, opposite end of the battery i've got cell one that's going to be our main negative terminal initially i'm going to use just a couple of pieces of this vhp tape all right so i've got the cells put together uh with a few pieces of the VHP tape and then I just wrapped everything with a round of electrical tape to help keep everything together. We're going to go ahead and put the bus bars uh, on the battery. All right, so with this last bus bar connection, I'm going to tighten these up just snug, not, not tight. When you're tightening these down, Irregardless, 
you don't want to over tighten them strip out the terminal slug all right so with all those together like that that's actually will be powered up and should have us uh into a 12 volt battery let's see y'all can see that 13 volts all right so let's pull that back off all right so next comes the bms so we got to figure out uh where we're going to mount the bms and how we're going to wire that up bms this is a common port bms that means it has a one single port or wire for charging and discharging uh a, a dual port has two common sense and these are the balancing leads right here so set that off to the side for a second what you'll have is uh, this is a 4s meaning a four cell uh, bms you can get them in almost any configuration but you have this black wire uh, and this is going to be our go to the first cell negative uh, and then the, we're going to start with the positives uh, on the wire next to it this will be the first cell positive the wire next to that is going to be the second cell positive third cell positive and fourth cell positive uh, so that's how these are wired up so so for the purpose of this demonstration uh, I've got just some spade connectors on the ends of these wires when I get the 100 amp BMS the way I prefer to do it is to solder the leads uh, directly I got a little piece of wood right here that's got I put uh, BSB tape on the back of some tape right here um, I want to make sure that I have enough room with the wires, but I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. Now this blue wire is going to go to the main cell negative along with the other uh, BMS wire. Just as such. Now these little wires that we're dealing with here are going to be the ones that are monitoring the cells, making sure they're staying in, they're all balanced. And we just stick that down so it's not going anywhere. All right, so all right, I'm going to move some of this out of the way and we'll continue. Hold on. All right, so this is a NOCO. Yeah, 24, uh, group 24 snap top battery box. All right, so what we're going to do now here is the top the, uh, of the battery box got a, uh, the positive wire here that's going to attach to uh, main cell positive and then I have the negative lead right here uh, this is our new negative lead because it's coming out of the BMS uh, and we'll attach that to where the negative post is going to be and then we should be able to plug the BMS in and get some voltage all right so we got everything hooked up here uh, the BMS is all wired in. Uh, I'll put up a diagram uh, that shows how you wire up one of these. Uh, and it's really the same. It doesn't matter how many cells you have uh, once you get the orientation right for the balance leads. Um, well, again, this is a common port BMS, which means it's going to use this one lead for charging and discharging. That's what you want. Uh, and the positive is wired in over here on this positive. So the battery is not really completely on at this point because the BMS leads are not hooked up. So what we want to do, you'll get some bleed through voltage. I'm going to sit this up here if I can. All right, so that's showing nine volts DC. Now I'm going to reach over and plug in the BMS wires. All right, if we check it again, all right 13 volts dc so now the battery is on and ready to go uh, all the voltage is running through the bms um, like i said when i get the other bms the 100 amp i will change it out put it right here in this place uh, wire up the balancing leads i'll solder them uh, to each bus bar 
uh, in the correct location and then put a little bit of spray foam in the bottom uh, on each side of this box not much just a little bit uh, so it'll expand about halfway up and then it'll be locked in place um, you can take them out if you have to uh, but it just keeps everything nice and still other than that take the top snap the back on snap the top on and there we go again these outside terminals 13 volts and these little plastic caps are actually caps that came on the terminals of the cells when I bought them so I just use them uh, for marking positive and negative and then you can hook your battery or hook your wires up right here all right guys so that's going to do it for putting together the battery pack and, and the BMS and making it into a working battery uh, like I said there's so many ways to put those things together some people put them in a milk rate uh, some people don't put them in anything that nylon cases on each of the cells those are pretty tough uh, so you can kind of shrink wrap those together um, yeah there's so many ideas out there for putting these things together I'll put a link up or I'll put a picture up uh, for the BMS wiring and but stay tuned we're going to be doing a part three and i'm going to do a capacity test on that battery those cells i've had for a long time and i'm anxious, i want i'm curious to see if they actually will still give me 100 amp hours so stay tuned for that make sure you hit the thumbs up and the notification bell it helps us out on youtube with the youtube algorithm until then guys take care of each other and love each other make every moment count we'll see you next time guys